welcome back to Secret Weapons, and today we're taking a look at the Ringer Bringer Ring Modulator by Warm Audio. Ring modulation is, in my experience, one of those effects uh, whose practicality and application eludes a lot of musicians and most guitar players. Uh, I have seen Ring Mod used successfully uh, across, you know, modular players uh, like hard synths, uh, Euro rack enthusiasts, that kind of thing, as well as some of the more esoteric and ambitious guitar players in our space. But finding practical day in, day out uses can be something that a lot of guitar players recoil against, if not outright bounce off of. When Warm Audio reached out to see if I would be interested in taking a look at the Ringer Bringer, this large tabletop looking uh, device here. I was nervous, but looking forward to it. I have been following and been aware of Warm Audio for years now as a creator of really high quality and accessible versions of rack gear that I really aspire to get. Um, I really do need to get a, like a real 1176 and a couple of real 1073s in my studio at some point. And for a home studio enthusiast like me, Warm Audio is going to be the kind of version of that stuff that I can afford while still getting something that feels like it's high quality. Um, their recent forays into the pedal industry have been fascinating to watch and have been largely pretty kind of conventionally useful pedals. So to see them bring a ring modulator into the fold was an interesting choice on their part. And like I said, I was nervous but optimistic. And I have to say, this is the most time I have ever spent with a ring modulator ever. We've covered them very, very lightly on this channel in the past by way of a multi-effect that also has a ring mod where we take an obligatory, if not cursory, look at that particular set of uh, uh, parameters as we kind of blitz through the 47 different modes that whatever pedal has. But today, instead, we are taking a long, focused look on Ring Mod in the form of this Ringer Bringer. So let's talk about what this thing is, what makes it interesting, and what makes it special. First off, and the thing that I found to be the most immediately useful is, in the center here, you have a drive control. It is always on, even if the pedal is bypassed, even if the mix is at zero, you have a kind of drive control control in here for setting your kind of level and it's a good sounding drive. You heard some overdrives, oh, some overdrive tones and stuff on that intro uh, mixed in with Ring Mod as well as all on its own. And I really, really like the way that the drive sounds on this thing, especially cranked all the way out. It is touch sensitive and splattery and chaotic and it's quite fun. I mentioned there that it is active no matter where the mix is set and uh, the inclusion of a very, very kind of like wide ranging mix control on this is also amazing because the relationship between the mix and your frequency carrier control are incredibly important. You can set really fascinating tremolo to kind of like obviously ring mod, more conventional ring mod sounds with that frequency carrier and then not just soften them but actually change the character of them using the mix control in ways that I did not see coming and really, really enjoyed. And speaking of that frequency carrier, that frequency control has a toggle for low speeds and high speeds. The low speeds being some of the slowest I have found in a uh, frequency carrier for a ring mod, which means you have a wealth of really, really excellent tremolo sounds. Um, and not just kind of like fast hummingbird tremolos, but like conventionally lazy sounding trems that sound really, really nice available to you in this thing that then in turn kind of like morph into those kind of bell chimey, broken radio sounding things that you expect from a ring mod. But then the really fun additional quirk of this pedal, the, the thing that makes this so much more interesting to play with, in my opinion, is this LFO on the left side of the pedal. You have your LFO depth and your rate. In this case, it says amount and rate, uh, as well as a switch for a sine wave and a square wave. This LFO both has an output on the top, we'll circle back around to that, 
and it also applies directly to the frequency itself. So you have your frequency carrier modulating your signal as well as a two band LFO with two different waveforms modulating the waveform of the frequency carrier itself. And what that means is you have access to a ton of fascinating sounds in this thing. Like I said, you have conventional tremolos where you can kind of find a relationship between the frequency and the mix to create interesting, complex, non-traditional tremolos. And then you can bring in that LFO to further modulate the shape of your tremolo waveform, allowing you to basically have three different points of contact for changing the shape of that amplitude curve. Uh, you can also then take that thing into faster and more aggressive sounds, pushing it into pitch modulation and kind of bizarre harmonic buildup overtones, sirens and big dramatic pitch shifts up and down, the ability to create fascinating octave sounds and just kind of otherworldly textures that I think really, really serve well in an ambient context. We will get into that a bit in our sound samples. We'll bring in our delay and our reverb that we used and showcase how you can get really wonderful lo-fi otherworldly sounds that just kind of ping through your delays and reverbs in really kind of dusty and beautiful ways. And this is a thing that I think I and other people have made use of in the past. I want to give a quick shout out to my buddy John over at Signal Path, who did a ring mod video a little ways back, which I'm actually going to link in the description down below. It's for a different ring mod, but uh, he does some of the kind of best implementations of ring mod in, in, in an ambient context that I have heard. And if you're looking for inspiration on how to use this or any other ring mod that you might be using, I think his video is well worth a watch. But that tangent aside, uh, we've seen applications for cool ambient soundscape and sound design uses for a ring mod. The thing that has been a struggle for me in the past and what I found so gratifying about this project today is the fact that like that intro track made use of more conventional guitar parts a more conventional guitar song structure where we didn't just zero out the ring mod and use that drive when it came time to kind of like hit a big rock and roll chorus uh, by kind of setting a fascinating and weird texture with that ring mod and then fine tuning it just right with that mix control, you actually can create incredibly unique sounds that feel right at home in a more conventional mix while still offering the spice of something weird. But it doesn't feel weird for weird sake. And that's something that I have struggled with ring mod uh, for a long time now. This has kind of given me a little bit more of a conventional understanding, or it's given me a better sense of how to kind of like in integrate ring mod sounds into the kind of music I love to write. But for the more exploratory musicians out there, this thing does do all of that other stuff as well, as you can tell from everything we've said so far, as well as allows you to kind of like dial it into a greater context with specific inputs for expression, uh, for rate, amount, mix, and frequency all on their own, as you can see, all on their own jacks, giving you the ability to kind of find a million different ways to modulate this thing at the same time, as well as um, your LFO output your carrier output as well as a uh, CV input for carrier in. Uh, in this video, we actually went ahead and just ran the LFO out to the carrier in at the end of this video just to see what would happen. And it actually somehow unlocks an even slower setting for your carrier, which is fascinating. And just a fun quirk of me not having access to anything with CV in my studio. So um, this thing feels like the ring mod for anybody who's looking for a ring mod, whether you are a deep lore tweaker or somebody who just wants to take a drive part and give it just a hair of strange. So let's get into our sound samples and let's check out the Ringer Bringer. As always, before we get into our sound samples, let's talk through our signal chain and the context we're working in. I'm playing my Music Man St. Vincent Goldie into the 29 pedals Yuna, the Cali 76 compressor by Origin, and the Benson Germanium Boost. From there, we go to the Ringer Bringer by Warm Audio. We have a Chase Bliss Express Expression Roller sitting next to it that we will use later in the video. And then we go up to the Sur Discovery Analog Delay and the Stramon Flint. Our amplifier is a Morgan PR20. 
12 running into the Universal Audio aux box. We are recording into Universal Audio's Luna using a Neve 1073 for our kind of preamp level setting, and we are mastering with ATR tape and the SSL bus compressor. Here's our dry tone. <laughs> So you'll hear that we have the amp set pretty clean right now, and that's because I want to start by really highlighting this drive control that is uh, always active in the pedal. So even with our uh, bypass switch disengaged right now and our mix at minimum, this drive is currently operating. Uh, so you can kind of have like a unified, always on kind of like a level set here so that when you activate the pedal, there's not a giant change or anything. And it allows you flexibility across multiple input, input sources for the Ringer Bringer. So let's go ahead and start by just listening to this drive because like I said earlier, I really like it. As you can hear, that, that drive is very reactive to your playing. Yeah, that drive is rad. Let's get into the actual kind of like modulation thing in this pedal because that is ultimately why we are here. So let's go ahead and turn on the Ringer Bringer and actually get into the modulation engine in this thing. Uh, we'll bring that mix up to maximum just to start things off. And we'll start rolling through the kind of slower half of your frequency carrier right here. So let's give it a listen. So as you can hear at the very slowest points here, that frequency control, that uh, that frequency carrier happening uh, gets incredibly slow, which is actually really amazing because a lot of ring mods don't go slow enough to give you kind of conventional tremolo effects and whatnot. But rather than a normal tremolo being a lot more straightforward or requiring some kind of very intentional like rate change to give you kind of like inconsistent or multi-pattern tremolo stuff, 
that the way that the uh, carrier, uh, this frequency here, interacts with that mix, as you can hear, immediately starts creating a lot of like interesting complexity. So you can just. <laughs> And of course, let's use this as an opportunity to take a to take our TRS cable from our expression and plug it into the dedicated port up top for frequency. So we'll set our floor. And then you can increase that. And you can hear we're already getting into like hummingbird territory with the ability to get very, very quickly into that kind of conventional ring mod noise. Which you would also be hearing if you just maxed this out on this side as well, even in this uh, slower of the two switches. Like I said, the interaction between frequency and that mix control is really interesting. And even there, without getting into the left side of this pedal, which is really kind of like the sub-control of this, um, this, uh, this frequency right here, uh, you're already getting into really interesting kind of textural things where if you take that mix all the way up. Uh, let's actually, just for my own ease of use, let's go ahead and reassign our expression pedal to mix for basically the remainder of this video by just switching it over to the next port. And now I have a slightly more easy access point uh, for the awkward place I'm sitting for this video. But yeah, even right here, you've got that kind of like, we're into that kind of weird, what do people do with ring mod kind of area, that starting place that confuses like people who are not ring mod enthusiasts. And that mix control just gives you access to kind of like taming it way back in a really interesting way. And that can be really interesting too, because you can take that back down to zero. Get this thing to break up again. And 
And that little bit of uh, added kind of like stutter or jitter can just operate in this really interesting way to provide some like kind of added texture to your overdrive tone. back into the weirdness but yeah it's really interesting and that's just in the kind of like slow half of that frequency range. Just for the sake of completeness before getting over to this other side, let's go ahead and reset that to its slowest point again. Full wet again. And now let's jump over to the fast side of that toggle. And so this is the stuff that gets super like weird very quickly. That kind of like, it goes from tremolo to that pitch, that pitch shifted thing with a lot of like weird harmonic dissonance. This is where I like fine tuning those really like low, uh, those low mix sections here. And I will also say, this is the stuff that I think is really interesting in a more kind of like ambient minded context. You heard we used a lot of lo-fi delay and reverb on that intro. So let's bring in our reverb and our delay really quick. Let's set our delay kind of nice and dusty and slow. Clean up our tone a little bit more. See, like I said, I think that kind of thing, devoid of any like additional context, is rad, like legitimately. But within the context, I think it becomes really, really, really rad. Okay, let's take those back out really quick because whatever we just did with the swell,
Oh yeah, that overtone right there. It comes in at a different rate than the actual dry tone does. We're, we're learning in real time, folks. Okay. The way the harmonics build up, the way those frequencies, those pitch shifted frequencies kind of manifest as you kind of increase the, uh, the pickup input. That is, that is incredibly cool. Okay, wet effects back off. But yeah, as you can hear, we're finding these really interesting moments of like harmonic goodness, uh, kind of like melodic and kind of tonal and atonal interest in there. It's funny how different strings react differently. So like our, our G string at the ninth fret. Versus the E string, high E now. But then you, you mix in that dry tone again. you've got an octave. Okay, so that is the frequency carrier and its relationship with our, our mix knob. Let's go ahead and go to full wet Let's go back to our slower area where we are. Uh, we'll leave that down there. Just know that we are at full wet and I'll try to kind of like always make a note of that. So now we're back at kind of a slower, more tremolo -y version of that frequency carrier. And let's take a look at our LFO that basically subdivides and otherwise modulates the frequency carrier uh, response itself. Let's take them both at noon, just right off the bat. So uh, the relationship between the two uh, sides of the pedal is basically you have your frequency modulation, your, your, um, your frequency carrier over here, which is its own waveform that kind of like cycles uh, from its slowest point to its fastest point. And then you can also modulate the uh, rate that that frequency, you can modulate the shape of that wave, both in terms of speed and shape, using this uh, LFO applied to that, which is then in turn blended into your mix. So that is why Ring Mod sounds so weird and, uh, and why you can get such interesting textures out of it. So 
back to that kind of very stock standard normal tremolo sound. We have our rate turned up a little bit, but we have our amount down. So we are not applying any LFO to that frequency carrier until we start to increase this amount. And you can create interesting additional pitch warble and other weird, bizarre kind of consequences. <laughs> You can already hear there, we are now creating kind of a multi-pattern uh, tremolo because we have the standard kind of like waveform being created by the frequency itself. And then we are also creating an additional kind of like wiggle in that frequency's line, giving us that interesting, rich, complex, kind of like multi-tap sounding tremolo. Which once again, we can then bring that mix back down. And now we have three different levels in which frequencies and waveforms are clashing with each other to create a very bizarre uh, LFO for a tremolo. But of course, we can go weirder and farther than just kind of like LFOs on LFOs on LFOs for tremolo. Let's jump back over to that fast side, take that LFO back down. And we have like that classic useful ring mod sound. Where it has that weird kind of hairy texture to it. As you can hear, we are applying some kind of like pitch modulation with the LFO to the frequency carrier. So if we go full wet, back to that slower thing. You can hear it slowly turns into vibrato.
Let's jump over to that square. And you started to hear some really interesting kind of grit and texture coming in just by the like exact right combination of these things. Let's turn that drive up with that mix at zero, get our kind of like overdrive sound again. And now bring that mix back in. Again, we're gonna do it. We gotta do it. It's the, it's that. Uh... And of course, you can clean that up a little bit farther. Bring those wet, those wet controls down a little bit, but so that they're still present. Even cleaner. But obviously, none of it would be. It's weirder and weirder and weirder. But even at those low settings, you can then fine tune that, that relationship.
Okay, so one final thing I want to mess with as we kind of like wrap this up. We demonstrated a little bit of how you can just kind of grab expression inputs for kind of all of your main parameters up top, uh, allowing you to do a bunch of really interesting stuff uh, like run an expression pedal dedicated to different locations um, or uh, from other sources. This thing obviously also supports CV in and out. You can run control voltage out from the LFO or the carrier itself, or you can go ahead and run um, an external CV source to the frequency carrier itself. Um, I don't have any like modular gear or anything that really kind of like operates in that way, but I wanted to kind of like test it out a little bit and I did find something interesting. So when you kind of like plug in and listen, your kind of slowest sound tends to be. But I did notice that if I go ahead and run a TRS cable from our LFO output and then into the carrier input, we actually end up getting a much slower uh, frequency carrier. And in this context, this is kind of totally invalidated. Anyways, it's just an interesting kind of like funny thing of having dedicated inputs and outputs on the back for CV is you can actually just kind of like loop this straight into control that directly, uh, allowing you to effectively uh, use this to set it in case you wanted to an even slower version of the, uh, of the frequency carrier itself.